to open. When the, uh, this retreat came up, I knew I was supposed to come here. And I see, uh, you know, everybody's studied this. And I'm in my 70s also, and I haven't started to study it. And it's like, oh my God, I've missed the boat somewhere. And then I hear you, you know, going through the step by step that you go through, and I'm thinking, well, maybe the script is I just have to come back again and again. And it's like, I don't really want that script. <laughs> and I don't know what to do. Well, I can tell you right now, it, it, it actually, the awakening itself has nothing to do with age. And it has actually nothing to do with study either. Uh, a lot of people study the Course for decades. I mean, it's been around, it was published in the mid-70s. Uh, and I have friends that have worked with it and studied it and so forth. And, and yet, I would say awakening, which is what healing and awakening is what we're really into, is a matter of readiness and willingness. That even if you're willing, but you're not ready yet, uh, it will just, everything was on hold, everything will wait until the mind is ready. So even though I've worked with the Course for like a quarter of a century, and I've been into all these 28 countries, and I talk to so many people who work with it, I hear all these stories about how it kind of, first it gets into their house somehow, almost like an animal. It just, it finds its way into their house. Sometimes they use it as a plant stand, a doorstop. You know, it gets in there somehow and it's used. Sometimes it's stuck in their library. Like they get it and they go, hmm, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> they don't read much and they just put it away. That's what happened with Lisa. She had it in her house. And then she had this deep mystical experience with these angels and sparks of light. And it was such a transforming experience that after the mystical experience she could actually read it and understand it. But before then she couldn't. So, you see, that's a good readiness story, like, wham, 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 powerful mystical experience, and then, oh my gosh, the Course suddenly, you know, the words, she could understand them, she could read it. So, I always, I mean, I've had a lot of people around the world, and I go, I call them like elderly beamers, and sometimes they give me a big hug with their gray hair, and a big hug, and then they whisper into my ear, if I only had the Course when I was your age, and I go, nonsense! <laughs> it's not a matter of, of age. It has nothing to do with age. It has everything to do with readiness and willingness. And just like when the teacher is ready, the student will appear, and the student's ready, the teacher will appear. When the time is right, and when, when there's a readiness, things click and flow so easily. And until that point, I've heard people tell me that First they get the Course into their house, and then it's weeks, months, or years later before it falls off the shelf and knocks them on the head, or it just, it's amazing the stories you hear of how people, when they're ready, they're ready. It's like bonk, they trip over something, something major happens, and they're aware that it's time. And so much of the spiritual journey is timing, you know, we, we have to have the ears to hear. We have to have the eyes to see. When, we're, when our mind's ready, everything floods to it just perfectly. We can't force the river. We can't push the river. We can't, we can't like speed it up. I mean, I know that's hard to hear sometimes because people are always asking me, how do I speed this up? But basically the script is written, you know, it, even the point where you seem to go, aha, I got it, <laughs> you know, is all part of a prearranged plan. And, and it's our desire, the desire in our heart, that really, really propels the whole things. I think Jesus says in the Course, Truth will be returned to your awareness by your desire, as it was lost by your desire for something else. Desire, the, the prayer of the heart, is really the, the key in this whole thing. And it's only the ego that tries to say, if only I was younger, if, you know, it's the hypotheticals, if only I'd come across this a little bit earlier, oh, now I'm going to have to come back in another lifetime. You see how it just starts with it spinning its webs, you know, of, of future and past distractions. And you don't have to buy any of that. 
that those things are are really not relevant. Um, it doesn't matter if there's one part of the course where, you know, he says some will will see the point of this course at the or or accept this course at the point of death and rise to teach it. You could be on your deathbed and have aha that's what kind of we could say that's what happened to Mary Baker Eddy. She was literally she was had fallen on the ice and she had all this internal so called wounds and bleeding was laying there and the doctor had gone in and it basically said uh, made the decision she wasn't going to live went out to tell her friends who were waiting in the next room meanwhile she reached over and grabbed her bible and read the, remember that famous parable from the bible where the the paralytic you know has to have be put on the roof and remove the tiles and be lowered down and she goes and she starts reading that thing and she gets it right there on her deathbed and she rises up after basically the doctor said she's gone and she walks out and the doctor turns white and all the friends turn white because they think it's a ghost <laughs> seeing a ghost they they'd written her off so isn't it great you could be on your deathbed and go I get it <laughs> you know I get the whole thing and just rise right up like Mary Baker Eddy again showing it doesn't have anything to do with age the condition of the body she got it when she had a lot of internal bleeding going on. It's a good time. She just <laughs> rose up and enough of this <laughs> foolishness. I do not choose this symptom. <laughs> you know, boom. And wow, did she go from there. She rose up and taught it and taught it. The blind could see, the lame could walk. Symptom removal all around her. This glowing presence of, of Christ just radiating in her and through her. You know, so that's why when I I have been taken to people when they're on their deathbed, or I would be taken with somebody who's been diagnosed with, you know, progressive cancer and they're just laying on a couch, and I'll go in there and start joining and connecting with mine, and we'll have such a, a high joining that they will, you know, say to their wife, "Get me these books immediately," <laughs> you know, it's like I'm going to get busy, like Arsenio would say, I'm going to get busy right now with, I just met David, I just see things in a whole different way and I'm just going to take off in my life, even if they're laying on their deathbed. They're not like, it's too late, or that's just the ego's story, it's too late. Oh, it's too late, baby, now it's too late. <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> Though we really did try to make it. <laughs> Could be, yeah, Tom. The spirit world is right here listening to it, too. Yeah. It doesn't stop after death. Yeah. It's all continuous, yeah. So death of the body, is we could throw that right in there with aging and all the other things as irrelevant. Death of the body is is not a real death. I mean, we don't see it, but they could be all listening to it. Yeah, singing along with us. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's beautiful.